Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Miss Faika and my friends. So my name is Nur Ali Nadira Binti Sahimi. So today I would like to present to you guys about skull waters open mouth. So the first one is the difference of image cultural for PA skull and image cultural for skull waters open mouth. Uh, the image cultural for PA skull is distance from the oblique orbital lines to lateral cranial cortex is equidistant. Then the petrous ridge superimposed with supraorbital rims. Then the last one, the structure that should be included are frontal bone, crystal galley, petrous ridge, anterior and posterior clinoid, and oblique orbital line. For the skull waters of the mouth, the image criteria is maxillary sinus demonstrated, no rotation of cranium, petrous ridge below maxillary sinus, and the structure that should be included is frontal sinus, bony nasal septum, zygoma, maxillary sinus, petrous ridge, and spinal sinus. For the projection, this is a radiograph of a PA projection of the skull. I say so because maxillary sinus can be seen bilaterally, petrous ridge below maxillary sinus, and the structure that should be included is frontal sinus, bony nasal septum, zygomatic bone, maxillary sinus, petrous ridge, and sphenoid sinus. We go to the correct positioning. Uh, the distances from the lateral orbital rims to the lateral cranial cortex and from the bony nasal septum to the lateral cranial cortex on both sides are equal. Then the petrous ridge are demonstrated inferior to the maxillary sinus. Bony nasal septum is aligned with the long axis of the exposure field and infraorbital margins are demonstrated on the same horizontal plane. Next is how to detect a wrong positioning. The first one is rotation of cranium. Based on the radiograph, the patient's head was rotated to the left. There is no equidistance between the lateral cranial cortex and the lateral orbital rims on both sides. Then, the second one is if the chain extended too much, the petrous ridge are too inferior to the maxillary sinus. And the last one is chin was not elevated enough. If the patient chin was not elevated enough, the petrous ridge are too superior as it is superimposed with maxillary sinus. So, to correct this wrong positioning, we must make sure the mental meter line perpendicular to IR. Next, we go to positioning. The positioning for this projection is correct. I say so because the petrous ridge visualized inferior to maxillary sinus. Then, there is equal distance between the lateral cranial cortex and the lateral orbital rings on both sides. Then the infraorbital rims are demonstrated on the same horizontal plane. Next is alignment. The first alignment is between astral tube and patient. The is cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four borders of the film. The second alignment is between astral tube and cassette. It is also cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four borders of the film. Then the last one is the alignment between cassette and patient. It is incorrect because uh, the distance between the inferior part and superior part from the central structure is not equal, which is the inferior part is bigger than the uh, superior part. Then the centering point for this radiograph cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four bodies of the film. The standard centering point for this projection is central ray is perpendicular to IR to exit at Acantheon. For the collimation, at the spare part, it must include lateral orbital rings on both sides, frontal sinus, and infraorbital rings. At the inferior part, it must include sphenoid sinus, here, petrous ridge and zygomatic bone. At the lateral side, it must include lateral cranial cortex, lateral orbital rims, and maxillary sinus. 
then there is no evidence of radiation protection apparatus seen on the radiograph. Next is exposure factor. The KVP used is adequate for penetration and radiographic contrast. This is because the bony cortical outline of thin structure which is orbitorans is can be seen and the bony cortical outline of thick structure which is petrostrich also can be seen. The MLS used for this radiograph is adequate for density and details. This is because the trabecular pet the Bony trabecular pattern of thin structure, which is muscular sinus, can be seen, and the bony trabecular pattern of thick structure, which is zygomatic bone, also can be seen. So, no action needed for both KVP and MAS use. For the marker, there is evidence of an anatomical marker seen on the radiograph, uh, but the marker is at incorrect side, which is it's supposed to put on the right side. But the radiographer put on the left side, but it has correct annotation and appropriately not superimposing any region of interest. So, way to improve this, place the anatomical marker at the right side of the patient. For the aesthetic, the film size used for this radiograph is cannot be determined because this radiograph is obtained from the internet. Then the standard film size for this projection should be 24 times 30 cm, which is sufficient to demonstrate all structure of interest. Then there is evidence of artifact seen on the radiograph, which is a description of this projection on the bottom right. Next is name. The patient's name and ID, date of examination, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. So way to improve this, please place it at the top or bottom edge of the film and not overlapping the region of interest. So the last one is the conclusion. The radiograph is not acceptable because there is no patient name, ID, date and place of examination. Then there is also wrong side of anatomical marker place which has to be on the right side of the patient. So this is the references that I use to complete this assignment. Uh, thank you for listening.